So you can see that I'm starting to take the solder up here. And uh, this isn't a job you want to try and do fast. You just want to come in and take a little shavings off at a time. Uh, there's a couple reasons for that. One, you really don't want to gouge into the metal here. You don't want to gouge into the rib or the barrels. It's a very difficult spot that if you nick the metal to go in and have to clean it up and polish it down and take it all down to smooth again, it's a tough spot to get into. So you really don't want to put a nick in the metal anywhere. The other thing is, and this isn't likely to happen, but it can happen, is if you try and get in and dig this whole section of solder out all at once, it's possible to accidentally get in underneath the rib and pop the rib up. You can break that solder joint. Now, granted, that's a very strong joint the way this is done, but it's, it is potentially possible to pop those uh, joints apart. And so you really don't want to do that. Um, if you ever pop this joint apart, then you have to obviously come back in and re-solder it, refit it, get it all back down. But it also means you have to recheck your regulation, because if you mess with any of this at this point, you can mess up the regulation on it. So it's really kind of a slow job. You just want to come in and just scrape a little shaving off at a time. You don't want to really dig into it and, and try and take a big chunk of it out all at once. And it can mostly be done by hand just by pushing these tools along. Um, if you do get into a spot where you need to put a little more pressure on it, I like to use an uh, um, engraving hammer, lightweight one, about three quarters of an ounce. That uh, doesn't put a lot of a lot of umph behind what you're doing so but you just want to take your time and, and peel this solder up out of here and like I said you start with these chisels and take the bulk of it up with the chisels and then uh, you move on to the rifflers to take out the because the, the chisels won't take you down to bare metal so you use the rifflers uh, the fine point rifflers to get in there and, and uh, file a bunch of it off and then you come in with a dental pick to get down way in the bottom or the handmade tools like my uh, ones that I make out of drill rod and you scrape the bottom edges out and then uh, everything after that is sanding it and uh, that just takes time but you just use sandpaper going through your various grits and you uh, wrap it around your tools and get down in there and, and polish it all up so it takes a bit of work and it takes a bit of time to scrape all this out of here and clean it all up but it's uh, well worth your time to do it slowly and carefully and not mess up all the hard work you've done to this point. And you can see starting out with the chisels you can take quite a bit off pretty quickly. So, Anyways, I'll keep working at this and I'll uh, show you some more shots as it progresses along and you can see how it cleans up. So I've been cleaning this all out, I chilled all the bulk of it out, then I came in with my rifflers and cleaned up as much of it as I could without getting into the metal too much. And you can see that I've run a little bit of oxfo blue on this, a little cold blue. And what I wanted to show you was, this uh, little silver spot here is solder. And so that has to be cleaned up the rest of the way. And uh, that's how I was explaining it a little bit ago, was that uh, you know if you want to see where you're at on this and see how clean you're getting it, you just need to... Uh, run a little cold blue on it and the uh, solder won't, uh, the high force type of solder anyways, won't turn black and uh, you'll be able to see what spots you need to clean up and keep working at. So I just keep a little jug of oxfil blue around and some q-tips to kind of rub it down in there and then uh, the way you get down inside of those spots where it's real tight like that is um, nice wedge shaped wood and uh, glue a piece of sandpaper onto the end of it and then it's just a matter of getting down in there and working those edges and you just want to be careful not to round the edges off on the other spots you just got to get in there and work it down and, and get rid of that line of solder all the way out of there so I've got it flipped over now and I'm working on cleaning up the bottom here and uh, what I wanted to show you on this side was if you're building for yourself and you're not really worried about it you don't actually have to clean up from you know the forearm back because when the gun's assembled it's never seen all of this under here is, is not visible underneath the forearm um, of course I'm building for a customer and so it needs to be you know perfect basically or as uh, good as my skills allow and so I'll clean up everything all the way 
um, and so it'll all disappear and so it won't matter when it's blue but uh, <clears throat> For personal use, if uh, you know if you wanted to save time, you could save doing this stretch back here, basically. And historically, I've had numerous originals in my shop, um, double rifles and single shots and stuff. And uh, you'll find out that on a lot of originals, the section underneath the forearm isn't cleaned up. Um, it just wasn't uh, done on every gun back then. Even some very high-end guns, underneath the forearm is is left pretty rough. So. It's not unusual to see that on original guns, and uh, you know if you're if you're doing it these days and you're doing it for yourself, trying to build a, a double rifle or whatever, you can save some time by not cleaning up this section. But uh, like I said, for me, this is for a customer, and uh, so my work needs to be um, above and beyond basically. So I'll clean up all of this all the way along, and uh, it'll get blued, and, and you'll never see the solder lines hopefully. So. So there we have it. That's a, basically a week's worth of cleanup and polishing. Got it down to ready to blue. So what I have to do now is uh, do a little bit of engraving on it um, for the caliber and my maker's mark on top of the rib here. I'll do the caliber and the maker's mark. Then I've got a few other parts that have to be polished yet. Um, the uh, stocking safeties need to be polished and uh, the uh, checkering cut on them. Need to polish the triggers up. Uh, the sights need to be polished up. Just some little odds and ends that have to be done. And then it'll all be ready to blue next week. Um, the only other thing I've been working on on this this week is uh, getting the stock finished up so it'll be ready for checkering. And that's uh, been a pretty simple job. And I'll take you over and show you how that was done. And, and uh, it's got a ways to go yet, but it's getting closer. So this is the uh, stock um, hanging here. And the, where I've got it hanging here is uh, right above a little propane heater that kind of um, kicks on a couple times a day when it's cold. So it's about the warmest spot in my shop, pretty much that's got a constant temperature to it. And uh, humidity's been up a little bit the last week or so, so it's been taking about day and a half, two days in between coats to uh, get it to dry and harden up so that I can put the next coat on it. But um, the way this is done to fill this in, the very first coat is put on pretty heavy and then uh, I take um, the uh, Brillo type pads, the uh, really fine ones that are used for polishing and I use a little bit of uh, my uh, finishing oil and uh, this is some stuff that I mix myself and it's a mixture of uh, boiled linseed oil, um, tongue oil, uh, mineral spirits and uh, some Japanese drying agents and they're mixed in, in uh, various parts and uh, so I make this oil myself and it's put on pretty heavy as a first coat and then uh, it's rubbed back with the, the Brillo pad using that as a wet sanding base and that fills in all the oh, any open grain in it fills in any structure in there that uh, isn't smooth from the sanding and finish process and then every coat after that is done strictly with uh, by hand and uh, the coats after that are done uh, just with uh, a little dab of it on a finger and uh, you just rub that in as far as you can get it to thin it down and uh, then you take another little drop and it just takes a drop or two and you just keep rubbing it out until it's you know completely coated but it's hand rubbed um, if it's a little cool or a little cold uh, instead of using your fingertips you can use the uh, palm of your you know the butt of your hand and rub it in with that it'll generate a little more heat a little more friction and so every coat is put on, you know, one coat every day or day and a half, two days, whatever it takes to dry. And the, the coats are just rubbed in after that initial base coat. So that's how it's done and that's how it's filled in is just, a, you know, a heavy first coat that's uh, basically sanded back with a really fine, fine um, polishing pad, basically. And then, uh, wet, you know, it's wet sanded basically with a polishing pad. And then after that, it's just hand rubbed coats. It takes uh, somewhere between 6 and 12 coats to get a really deep finish going. And uh, it just takes time. You know, if you're taking a day and a half, two days between coats to dry, then it's going to take, you know, 15, 20 days to, to get the coats built up until you get that really deep, deep finish going. But uh, that's how it's done. Um, one of the things I will do is I haven't been putting any finish in these sections 
and uh, so I will come in and I will finish these sections eventually but for right now I'm just worried about the the stock finish itself um, these will get finished out with the uh, um, what I'll probably do and I've done this quite a bit in the past is uh, I'll uh, take some glass bed and I'll thin it down to where it's really thin and I'll basically just really thinly glass these whole sections in here and uh, that makes a really good hard finish on the on the interior sections so anyways that's how the finish works done once I get all the finish done on there um, to where it's built up and, and uh, got that really good uh, depth of finish going then it'll be ready for checkering so pretty slow process but it doesn't take a whole lot of time to do it either it only takes a, a few minutes every day to you know every couple days or whatever to uh, apply a coat of finish to it most of the time involved is just drying time